The ambiguous case of the sine rule refers to a situation we may be faced with when looking for an unknown angle in a triangle. And here's the whole idea. Consider the triangle we have here. And let's say we're looking for this angle here, which I'll go ahead and call x. Then we'll be faced with the ambiguous case of the sine rule if the information we have on this triangle is the side length opposite the angle we're trying to find, as well as an acute angle, which I'll draw right here, and I'll go ahead and call that angle A, and the side length opposite that acute angle, so that would be this side length right here. And those three things make up for all of the information we have. So try and remember them. That's the side length which is opposite the angle we're trying to find, as well as an acute angle and its opposite side length. Okay, now say the side length opposite the acute angle is called A, and the side length opposite the angle we're trying to find is B. Then if B is greater than A, in other words, if the side length opposite the angle we're trying to find is the longest of the two side lengths we have, then we'll be faced with the ambiguous case of the sine rule. And what that means is that there will in fact be two possible values for the angle opposite the longest side length. So in this case, two possible values for x. Indeed, because we don't know the value of this side length, nor do we know the value of the angle between the sides a and b, then this side length a could in fact be positioned differently, something like this, thereby creating a second triangle which fits with all the information we started off with, and for which the angle opposite the side length b would be this angle here that I'm drawing right now, and I'll call it x prime. And so we can see here that in one case this angle x is an acute angle, and in the other it's an obtuse angle. And as we're about to see with these two examples, there's a nice little formula that connects these two possible angles. And to illustrate it, let's go ahead and work through this first example. We can see here that we're given a triangle, and let's say we need to find this angle, which I'll go ahead and call x. Well, relative to this angle, we have the opposite side length, that's 14 centimeters long, and we have an acute interior angle, that's 32 degrees, and its opposite side length, which is 8 centimeters long. Notice that we don't have the angle between these two side lengths, nor do we know the length of the third side length here. Finally, we notice that the side length opposite the angle we're trying to find is the longest of the two side lengths. We'll therefore be faced with the ambiguous case of the sine rule, and there will therefore be two possible values for this angle. One will be an acute angle, which is illustrated here, and the other will be an obtuse angle which I'll illustrate in a minute. And so let's see how that works out. First of all, I'll try and find this angle x the usual way. And since I have its opposite side length, as well as another pair of angle and opposite side length, I can use the sine rule and state that sine of x over 14 is equal to sine of 32 over 8. Now multiplying both sides of this equation by 14 leads to sine of x equals to 14 times sine of 32 over 8. Finally, applying arc sine or inverse sine to both sides of this equation leads to x equals to inverse sine of 14 times sine of 32 over 8. And by all means check, but with my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that x is equal to 68.0 degrees. Done. And so at a first glance, one may think that's the only answer. But remember, this triangle, or the information we had in this triangle, fits all of the criteria for the ambiguous case. Indeed, the side length opposite the angle we were trying to find was the longest of the two side lengths we had, and the only other information we had was an acute angle and its opposite side length. And so since we don't know what this interior angle is, nor do we know what the third side length is, this 8 centimeter side length could in fact be positioned like this. In which case, the angle opposite the 14 centimeter side length would be this angle here, which I'll go ahead and call x prime. And to find its value, we use the fact that the triangle we have on the right hand side here that I'm hovering over right now is an isosceles triangle. And so this angle right here will also be equal to x, which remember was 68 degrees. The angle x prime, therefore, will be equal to 180 minus x. In other words, 180 minus 68. And I'll go ahead and write that x prime 
is equal to 180 minus 68. And that leads us to x prime is equal to 112 degrees. And we're done. We've just found the two possible values for the angle opposite this 14 centimeter side length. And it's worth pointing out that we'll always be able to find the second possible angle by subtracting the first angle we found from 180. Indeed, going back to the triangle I have at the top here, the triangle I'm hovering over right now will always be an isosceles triangle. Consequently, this angle here will always be equal to x. And so we can state that x prime will always be equal to 180 minus x. With that in mind, let's look at the second example. Again, we have a triangle, and let's say we need to find this interior angle here, which is opposite the 12 centimeter side length. So that's this angle right here. And before even starting, I noticed that this angle is obtuse, so for the sake of staying consistent throughout this video, I'll go ahead and call that angle x prime. Now, relative to x prime, we have its opposite side length, that's the 12 centimeters, and we have an acute angle, that 41 degrees we see here, as well as its opposite side length, which is 9 centimeters. And we notice that the side length opposite the angle we're trying to find is the longest of the two side lengths we have. Consequently, we're faced with the ambiguous case of the sine rule again, and we need to find two possible angles. One will be obtuse, that's the x prime we have here, and the other will be an acute angle, which I'll illustrate in just a minute. For now, let's go ahead and try and find x prime the usual way. So, we have its opposite side length, that's the 12 centimeters, and we have another pair of angle and opposite side length. And so, using the sine rule, we can state that sine of x prime over 12 must equal to sine of 41 over 9. Now, multiplying both sides of this equation by 12 leads to sine of x prime equals to 12 times sine of 41 over 9. Next, applying arc sine or inverse sine to both sides of this equation leads to x prime equals to inverse sine of 12 times sine of 41 over 9. And by all means check, but with my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that's equal to 61.0 degrees. Now, what we notice here is that the angle we just found is an acute angle, but the angle x prime we have here is an obtuse angle. And so it's worth pointing out that when using the inverse sine or arc sine function on our calculator, the angle it will give us will always be between negative 90 and 90 degrees. In other words, it won't give us the obtuse angle. And so this acute angle, in fact, corresponds to the other possible angle that can be opposite this 12 centimeter side length. And to picture it, I'm going to extend this unknown side length here, like this. Letting the corner that we have here move along this dotted line, we can see that there's a second triangle that matches all the same criteria as this one, which is the triangle I'm highlighting right now. Indeed, in this triangle, the angle opposite the 12 centimeter side length is definitely an acute angle, and that's the 61 degree angle we just found. And so in fact, I can box this result, there we go, and I can get rid of all the primes that I started off with here. Now to find x prime, all I have to do is use the formula we have at the top here. And so I can state that x prime is equal to 180 minus 61. And that leads us to x prime is equal to 119 degrees. And we're done. We've just found the two possible angles opposite this 12 centimeter side length. And there we go. That's what the ambiguous case of the sine rule is all about. Remember, we'll be faced with the ambiguous case when we're looking for an unknown angle, and all the information we have is the side length opposite that angle, as well as an acute angle and its opposite side length. And of course, the lengths of the two side lengths we have are such that the longest of the two is opposite the angle we're trying to find. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial.